Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you guys are doing good this morning. Man, super cold day here in Missouri. It's snowing outside right now. Got below temperature, below zero temperatures coming this weekend. And man, it's so cold, you can't even fish right now because not that you can't fish, but I don't think you could even launch a boat. You know, we had ice the last couple of days. I think it, I think you'd probably slide right in the water if you tried to get in. So anyway, it's a good, good time to get a little tackle work done, uh, work on some fish the moment stuff and, um, you know, just get ready for a little bit warmer weather. But hey, today I'm going to continue uh, talking about different lure categories, different baits. I've been talking about modifications and rigging. Um, today I'm going to take a little bit of time, uh, sort of pertinent to the time of the year, and I want to talk to you guys about what is probably my most old-time sentimental favorite lure ever, and I'll explain to you why. And this is the time of the year that I that I started using it 45 years ago, and I still use it today. And I got a lot of great memories with it. And what we're going to talk about today a little bit is a uh, is a one lure that you probably should definitely want your, to have in your tackle box, even though it's an old time, old school bait. But anyway, just before we get started here, a couple things. Um, as you guys know, you know here in Pro Fishing, social media is becoming a huge deal. And I just really like to invite everybody and ask if you guys help me out. I'm trying to get my Instagram uh, uh, page going a little bit better. And if you guys could give me a follow on Instagram, I'd really appreciate that. That's at, at block at Randy. Um, you can go on there and um, I also put, you know, a lot of a lot of fishing stuff on there. I think I've got like 15,000 uh, people following it right now, but um, it'd be great if everybody could, could join in on that and sort of help out. It'd be great. Appreciate it. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, the bait I want to talk about today that is uh, my old time sentimental favorite i've caught so many big bass on this lure I've, I've probably caught as many oh actually for sure i've caught probably more eight pound bass on this bait than any bait that i've ever fished in my entire career and that's the old <clears throat> rebel spoonbill minnow <clears throat> and i want to give you a little bit of history about this bait because i think it's really important guys for everybody to to, to sort of have an appreciation for the history of the sport whether it be you know, lures, whether it be tournaments, whether it be, you know, how the sport has evolved. I think the more that we stay in tune with the history of the sport, the more that we really respect what we have here, because we really have something that no other, you know, place in the world has like we do here at the bass fishing, like we have in the United States. It's just a really special thing. And so I, I like to include a little bit of history about the stuff that I talk about. So, a little bit of history on the Spoonbill Rebel. Um, the jerkbait, uh, we've talked about this before in some of my past videos, the jerkbait, modern jerkbait fishing that we see today originated right here where I live. The Table Rock, Bull Shoals, Missouri, nor southern, southwest Missouri, northern Arkansas type area. And <clears throat> this sort of came about, it was sort of initially developed back in the mid-70s. And how it really started, and I'm not sure about other little niches around this part of the country, but how, as far as I'm aware, how the modern jerkbait fishing started, a lot of it centered around Table Rock Lake in the mid-1970s. And how I got onto it, there was a guy named Jess Poindexter that lived in Joplin, Missouri, where I did. And Poindexter, he became like a legend around southwest Missouri for catching these you know, seven to 10 pound bass all the time on Table Rock Lake. You know, back then, you know, everybody, they either, they, they threw them back once in a while, but a lot of people kept them mounted and you'd have little contests weekly, like at the marinas for, for, you know, for big bass contests. And Poindexter was winning everything. I mean, he, he would bring in these seven to 10 pounders and lots of them every week. And a friend of mine, two, uh, and you know, good friends of mine, still great friends of mine with today, two of my best friends in the world, uh, David Bailey and Kurt Devine, they were good friends with Poindexter. We were all in the Big Mo Bass Club together, and everybody sort of got talking a little bit. Poindexter was super secretive about what we, he was doing, and finally, uh, David sort of got it out to him, got, got it out that he was fishing the Spoonville Rebel down at Table Rock. And what he was doing is back then, Table Rock had a lot of uh, standing and submerged cedar trees, big giant cedar trees. They were dead, but they had, you know, tons of limbs off it and they were really gnarly and they were everywhere on the lake. 
and Poindexter was taking the Spoonbill Rebel and reeling it down next to these cedar trees and, and stopping it for 30, 40 minutes, 30, 40 seconds and catching these giant bass. So eventually word sort of got out through friends and this and that and whatever. And I started fishing this thing and I started throwing it back in the late seventies. And there was a period there between like 1979 when I was in my little 14 foot flat bottom with my nine horse motor launching out a shell knob at Table Rock and about 1983, it wasn't a very big window. It was like a four or five year window at the most that this bait was just unbelievable. It was kept under wraps. Um, I can't, I can't even count how many seven to eight, nine pounder I caught at Table Rock on it during that period along with my buddies too. And I want to talk a little bit about the Spoonbo Rebel and you know, why I still use it today. I, I have had great success on this bait anywhere they bite a jerk bait across the country. Um, I've had super good success on the Texas lakes around grass. I've taken it back east on some of the Highland lakes. And for some reason, in mid in mid February, there's a window of time, and we're, we're, we're about in it right now, where this Spoonbill Rebel a lot of times will outfish anything else. And everybody knows I'm, I'm, I'm with Mega Bass. I use Mega Pass jerk baits 99.9% .9 of the time, all the time. But there's a couple, if I get in the right situation, in the right scenario, there's a time that you just can't beat the Spoonbo Rebel because it's just a different presentation. So anyway, here's the two Spoonbo Rebels that I use right here. And this is all, this was old school as you can get. This is all you needed. Back in the day, if it was cloudy out, we threw the gold with the black back. If it was sunny out or had partly cloudy or the sun was peeking through the clouds, you threw the uh, silver with the blue back. That was the only two colors that we had and that's all you needed. And so we would, we would, you know, all my buddies, if we'd go fishing, you know, we'd have these two tied on. This is the only thing we'd have tied on. And like I said, it was cloudy. We'd throw this one all day. If it was sunny, we'd throw this one all day. And the thing about the Spoonbo Rebel is different. I'll show you a little bit about the modifications here on this thing. First of all, first of all, the Spoonbo Rebel, um, you, like I said, you can still buy them today. They're still popular. This thing floats up like a cork. So you got to use a lot of lead on it. So as you can see here, I've got some, actually it's roofing lead right there that I've put on there, uh, super glued it on there, painted it, you know, white to sort of match the belly. And then what I've done, you know, I've got, you know, three number four hooks on it. These are old hooks. I, I'd use the Gamagatsus now. I think these are old gummies, but I'd use the, Eda, the G Finesse now. But anyway, I'd weight these things in the sink to where they, they suspend perfectly in the water. Like, I mean, we'd spend a lot of time taking this piece of lead and filing it down, cutting it with a knife, getting it just right. Uh, got red gills on it there and getting it just perfect. So this is the bait that you want to use when the fish are super uh, lethargic. When, you know, you talk about suspending jerkbait fishing where you have to let it set a long time. This is when the Spoonbo Rebel shines because you can really get this bait to set in one place a long time. But here's the real magic of the Spoonbo Rebel that really there's no other jerk bait that can duplicate is this spoonbill rebel with the lip on it the the bill that it has on there when you get it down to its deepest part and you snap the rod tip real high and this is a technique we developed back in the ozark this bait will back up like that you, you snap it real hard and it, it'll you'll it's like setting still snap it hard it will go just like that back up and there's something about it in this time of year when that water's real cold that they just love that thing. Another thing about the Spoonbo Rebel is that you fish it completely different than a normal jerk bait. You almost fish it like a crankbait. I'll take this, the Rebel, I'll throw it out there, reel it down, and once I get it down to what I feel is the, is the deepest part, I just pull it. I drag it like a Carolina rig. So it's setting up here suspended, and when I pull it, it it's just, it's basically just, just wiggling like this and stops. And it goes wiggling like that, stop. Then I'll pop it and it jerks back like that. It's a presentation that you just can't really, I've never seen another bait, you know, be able to mimic. Even the Mega Bass, like I think a lot of it, you know, the Mega Bass, they've got the internal balancer system in it and the Spoonbill Rebel doesn't have anything in it. So it has something to do with the, uh, you know, the, 
the, the buoyancy of the bait and the lip design with it. Cause you know, this is more of a crankbait lip than it is a jerkbait lip. Um, so like I said, it's uh, under those conditions, it's really good. So when do you want to use the Spoonbow Rebel? The Spoonbow Rebel works best when you have water temperatures in the mid forties, mid, low to mid forties, when you have water visibilities of anywhere between three to 10 feet. You know, it works really good in super clear water, really good down to three feet of visibility. And it works really good if you have the fish isolated, like in a sp sp specific spot. Say for example, you figured out they're on the end of the docks or they're on isolated grass patches or they're on specific pieces of standing timber. Places where, um, places basically that create an ambush point that you have to leave that bait for a long time because in normal jerkbait fish and with my, with my Vision 110s and all the mega bass lines, I'm covering water with those baits. I'm, I'm not stopping it very long. I'm trying to get a reaction strike. And with the Spoonbo Rebel, it's a completely different bite. It's a lot more of a finesse presentation. And that's one of the reasons this bait will produce so many big, huge bass is because it, um, you know, you can keep it in one place for so long and, you know, get those bass, those bigger bass that don't really want to chase, they'll bite it. And um, it's been around for a long time. I mean, it's, it's been a mainstay in the tournament world for a long time. A lot of the guys in Texas know about this thing. They picked up on it real quick back in the, about that same time frame. I mean, I know a lot of guys at Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn, Larry Nixon, Tommy Martin, all those old school dudes. You know, I've seen Larry and Tommy both fishing this bait, you know, back in the day, a long time ago. And we've all caught big bags on it. I've made a lot of money on this bait under certain situations on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. And back in the heyday, guys, man, I wish you guys could have been with me back in like, you know, 79 to 83, that in that time frame there. It, there was a, a time frame that where, you know, if we, if we went down there that time of year and we didn't catch a seven to nine pounder, that was just, that was, we were just shocked because almost every single time you went down there during that time frame, you catch a seven to nine pounder. We expected to catch one we didn't catch one, we were disappointed. So anyway, that's today's, you know, little history lesson or tip. Um, tell me guys, don't overlook this thing. This is old school as it gets. These spoon, they don't get any more old school than the rebels unless you go back to like the hellbenders and the, and the jitterbugs and the, and the lazy ikes. These, this is old school. It still works today. Great. It's there. I take them with me anytime I'm fishing a tournament back in the if you know if the water temperature I'm going to is going to be in the 40s, these spoonbill rebels go with me, and they probably always will. So anyway, that's today's tip, guys. I really appreciate it. Again, thanks for tuning into the channel. Appreciate it, and we'll be back with another tip. What are you doing over there? Huh? You gonna say hi to everybody? Yeah, hi everybody. Okay. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Bye.